Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up hardware faders that you can use when you're mixing live in your DAW. This video is part of a series of videos I've been doing on how to mix your live stream audio in a DAW with an isolated mix from front of house. Having physical faders that you can actually get your fingers on is an important part of making this type of setup work. It's an important part of mixing, really. The foundation of any mix is always going to be creating balance. But the balance between instruments or balance between voices is always going to need to be changing throughout a song. Take a listen to this. He will keep That guitar went from being a lead instrument to needing to swap places with the violin that was playing the melody. The simplest way to do that is with two faders, bringing one up and the other down. But you just can't do that simultaneously with a mouse driving two faders. When you use a DAW in post-production, mixing something that's been pre-recorded, you can use automation and envelopes to do these fader moves for you. But that doesn't work when you're mixing live. So having some faders that are controlling the right channels is a necessary part of making live mixing in a DAW work. So let me show you how you can set this up. I'm gonna be showing you how to set up the Behringer X-Touch extender. I've found these to be the best solution for adding faders to your DAW for live mixing. You can find a link to purchase one of these down in the description of this video. You don't need the full X-Touch model with all the extra buttons and the play and stop buttons, because when mixing live, you're not going to be using those functions. And even though this model is called the extender, it works perfectly all on its own to give you eight faders to control your DAW. And if you want more than eight faders, you can keep adding more of these as you go along. Once you plug this into the USB of your computer, in Reaper, we're going to go to the Options menu and then Preferences. And here in Preferences, if you click on MIDI Devices, you should see the X-Touch Extender showing up. But that's not where we're going to do the configuration. So scroll all the way down to the Control OSC Web option, and here we're going to click Add. And for Control Surface, select Mackie Control Extender. Then for MIDI Input and Output, select your X-Touch. Then some other options we need to configure here, the Surface Offset. This is going to set what faders in Reaper this control surface is going to control. So right now, with an offset of 0, fader 1 of the control surface will control track 1 in Reaper. And this is just my preference, but I like to leave it that way. It makes it easy to manage and know that whatever tracks I place at the beginning of my template are going to be controlled by my faders. If I were to add a second extender so I could control 16 channels, I'd put an offset in here of 8 for the second extender, and then it would be controlling channels 9 through 16. Finally, check the Ignore Global Bank offset. So the channels we are controlling will stay mapped to the first 8 channels instead of following the selected channel. Click OK, and now what we have is our first 8 channels in Reaper are being controlled by these faders. And the control works both ways. If I move a fader, it updates the track in Reaper, and if I move a fader in Reaper, it moves the fader on the control surface. Let me talk real quick about some suggestions for what tracks to map to your faders. The goal is to put the tracks that need the most mixing on your physical faders. The first thing I'd look at are my buses. That's obviously a place where you'll end up doing a lot of balancing work, getting the balance between your different instrument groups. I find that the balance within a group, not always, but oftentimes changes less than the balance between groups. I also like to put my vocals here, especially if your band changes who the lead and backing vocals are between songs within a set, you'll need to do some delicate balancing between your different vocals, so it's nice to have those on the faders. And then just feel it out as you go. If there's something you find that you're always reaching for with the mouse to mix, put it on your faders. And if you find that there's a fader that you hardly ever touch on here, drag it out of those first eight and just control it with your mouse. 
I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, bye.